Hey race fans, how's it going? I'm Anthony, and I'm a race fan just like you guys, um, where I live out in Philadelphia, PA. Not many people watching racing, not many people to discuss racing with, so I figured I'm going to start my own video blog about all the races in the 2011 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series campaign. Well, this weekend we had the Daytona 500, 53rd running of the Daytona 500. Very interesting we didn't know what to expect. Uh, just by looking at the shootout, looking at the duels, we knew that the two-car tandem that we've come to see at Talladega was going to be a big factor here at Daytona. As a matter of fact, in the Budweiser shootout, we had Kurt Busch win. Uh, he was pushed to the finish line, and he won. The duels, of course, we know that the first duel was once again won by Kurt Busch, which, by the way, had a phenomenal weekend. And the second duel was won by one Jeff Burton in the number 31 Caterpillar Chevy. So going off of that, the Daytona 500 started. Uh, we started on lap three with everyone putting three fingers up, saluting Dale Earnhardt in his 10th year anniversary of his passing. You know, this sport would not be where it is had it not been for him during his life and now during his death thanks to him we have the safer barrier wall which is one of the greatest inventions in racing uh, to date now um, of course other innovations as the Hans device and um, the card of tomorrow pretty much keeping drivers safe uh, we move along the day uh, we saw Kevin Harvick had a blown engine you know very unusual for RCR uh, to have engine problems, but it happened, and this was very early in the Daytona 500 around lap 22. What can we say? He was out. Um, he was a, a great hope to win this race, especially seeing after ending third in the points last season, but, you know, it wasn't his day. Uh, the big one. We had a big one in Daytona. Uh, Michael Waltrip bumped draft bump drafted uh, David Rudiman and I think going out of the corner we've seen crazy things with the bump drafting not many of the drivers can see from the back and you know we the big one happened and I think 17 cars were involved in this in this wreck um, all three Hendrick cars Johnson Martin and um, Gordon were involved Johnson and Johnson and Gordon really came back late, although Martin was able to uh, stay strong till the end. One thing to note this Daytona 500 is that uh, the Ganassi group, uh, Jamie McMurray in the 1 and Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42, they had a great run throughout the race, uh, pushing each other, doing the swaps uh, very easily and uh, with style. So uh, until Montoya had a uh, late uh, incident with Greg Biffle, and then Jamie lost a cylinder. Um, nonetheless, they uh, they had a good run, and so I expect actually both of them to make the chase this year, hopefully. Um, Jimmy Johnson, five-time consecutive Sprint Cup champion, defending champion, uh, going for his sixth title in a row. Uh, not the best of races, but uh, expect him to bounce back in Phoenix, and expect him to be back up top of the leaderboard. Ah, uh, underdogs. David Reagan. Reagan Smith had a phenomenal race. Uh, it seems like this guy pretty much knows how to get around super speedways. We saw a couple of years ago uh, when his when he was disqualified from winning the Daytona Five, uh, the Talladega. Uh, Four ninety nine for going underneath the yellow line, hence giving the uh, victory to Tony Stewart. Um, he, he raced pretty good this, this time around, and had it not been for the last uh, last minute caution, he would have been up there, challenging for this lead. Um, towards the end of the race, rookie mistake, David Reagan. Um, feel bad for the kid. Kid, he's my age. But, you know, I guess nerves got into him, and he ducked down into the inside line before the start-finish line, and... As the rules have it, he, he got black flagged. Uh, now we go to uh, one Mr. Trevor Bain. 
Uh, he was great in qualifying, qualified third. Uh, Jeff Gordon decided to, you know, draft with him. Uh, and, and like he says in many of his interviews, um, I guess Gordon gave the confidence to the rest of the drivers in the garage to uh, work with him. Great pusher all day. And at the end of the day, he was in the mix. We went into overdrive. NASCAR's new rules as of last year. Three uh, green-white checkers to see who, who wins the race. Uh, Bobby Labonte driving the 47 JTDG Doherty Toyota gave him a great push towards the end and um, once Trevor saw, saw the light there's not no one can get him uh, another underdog David Gilliland David Gilliland helped Carl Edwards push him all the way up Carl came very close to winning this 500 but uh, in the end Trevor uh, Trevor raced a, a good race it's nice for the sport seeing that a 20-year-old can win in a current under, underfunded team. Um, it, shows, it shows that you don't need to be, to, to be a Hendrick or, or Gibbs or an RCR to, uh, to win these races. Yes, we understand that these races can be a wild card, super speedway races. You know, most of the drivers don't like them. Some do. But... Overall, the Daytona 500 this year, I think, was a great success. I personally like the uh, the two two car tandem, the two car two car dance, as we may have it. Um, it, it does give the uh, the idea of what drafting is. You know, doing the slingshot, kind of like a Formula One move. Many people were referring it to back in the day. That's how they did it. I personally enjoyed it, and you know, just because we had this, we still had the packs at the back, so. It was a race. It was a race to watch. It was a race to enjoy, and uh, we'll see what comes from this. Um, Trevor Bain, 20 years old, second start in the Sprint Cup race last year in Texas, had a great finish there. This year, you know, limited schedule in the Sprint Cup. Uh, he had checked off the box for Nationwide Series, and you know, he he still needs to be developed. Hasn't won a uh, race in Nationwide, but now he won the Great American Race, one of the most important races in America. What was known about Trevor Bain before before now him being famous? Well, the only thing I knew about Trevor Bain was his commercial. Where the one guy is, you know, said Trevor Bain has uh, had his first career pole at the same track where he had his best career finish. But I guess now a lot of us will know a lot more about Trevor Bain and um, what he's doing. You know, humble kid, said he drove his F-150 from North Carolina all the way to Daytona, and was going to drive it back. Who would think that he would uh, have a life-changing experience? Uh, nonetheless, great race. Can't wait to uh, till the guys hit Phoenix next week and uh, see what happens from there. 